Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared initiative started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of Pi Cubed, and which has their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than by searching through lessons learned databases. I think project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and also from sharing their scars. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Srikant Patel, who's going to share some of his experiences with us. Hi Sri, um, I'd like hey, you to start if you can by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management. Mm, yeah, so I've been sort of in project management for the last uh, 12 years. I started off as a junior consultant for a management consultancy firm out in London and um, I just worked my way through the consultancy ranks which involved several different projects with several different uh, clients and that exposure was through retail, banking, um, insurance. I've eventually just stuck to it, stuck to the retail space, um, both sort of initially the traditional route and uh, more the online route. So what sort of projects are you involved with now? What kind of things are you delivering? What size are they? So I've uh, worked across um, setting up new sites right down to a global customer service uh, platform and all the technology that goes into that um, and I've also sort of set up uh, global distribution hubs um, that predominantly drive the core business of a retailer. So how many people <coughs> would you be working with on that sort of thing? What's the size of the project team typically? Most recent one which has been a um, big number of people so we're looking at about 40 people in total. So can you give us an example of a scar, so something that went wrong on a project that was particularly big or challenging and what you learned from it? It was with one retailer and it was specifically for a new uh, logistics hub that we were putting up and I was involved more on the, the non-production development and testing mm -hmm. uh, element of it. So making sure that whatever we were going to put live in production that would enable the logistics hub to operate um, and connect to the integrated platforms within the overall business mm -hmm. would run seamlessly. So one of the challenges and scars that I've had was developing and uh, testing the, right. the applications that were under, under test for production. And my responsibility was to look after the environments and the infrastructure and make sure they were scalable and provided the resilience for that testing to take place. One of the biggest issues we had was we had very old test data and to constantly get that relevant test data was a challenge because of the cost and the aged systems that we were using. Right. So there was a lot of money that was spent on generating data. There was a lot of money spent on trying to keep systems um, alive and afloat um, in the short space of time that we had. And essentially, we burnt a lot of capital uh, on a very aged system on a very critical project. Right. And for me, that was a very, very big issue because it just made me realize that you have to invest in your lower tier technology to enable a good production uh, deployment. So this is all to do with sort of test data, all your application testing, all your data testing, your data science, and what you want to try and achieve in a very short space of time as opposed to a very long strenuous activity. So what did you learn from that experience? The learning curve for me was work with the business, understand the requirements and tell the business that you will have to invest otherwise we can't achieve this. One of the principal things was I think challenging the rationale of doing the project. There's always that rush to try and get it in or get that project in mm -hmm. um, because of the criticality of the business. So everyone forgets how that's going to actually happen. At a top level, they just want it in because they're of the the, the positive impact it's going to have the business yep. and what it's going to drive. Um, so for that to happen, when you're looking at like big retailers that haven't invested in their lower tier technology, it's a big challenge. 
What do you mean by lower tier technology? So I mean by your non-production environments, your non-production mm -hmm. test rigs. So are you talking about things like development environments, development, testing environments, yeah, so staging yeah. environments, all, all of those, of all of those gotcha. environments. The problem with you with that is you have contention. You have a lot of projects. So if you look at a pipeline of a of a business of of a retailer, they'll have several projects. Mm -hmm. There are several streams that have technology changes. Understanding that pipeline management and understanding the contention is is a big challenge. And we invested um, with this one retailer heavily within that within that development and uh, um, application test environment uh, layer, and we brought it to a level where we could share and share and coexist with multiple projects. Yeah. Got to a position where we could refresh code and data in a much faster way, and that was one of the successes after yeah. a good year and a half. So that's not just about the, the <coughs> deliverable that you're creating that you can see, but it's no, about it's, the tooling behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, because you've got to remember, all these applications don't work in, in, in silo, they're all integrated. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to like say performance testing or like integration testing, you will need to test an end-to-end -end flow. And that was one of our biggest challenges. Okay, thanks. So that was a scar. Um, can you give us an example of something that you do regularly on projects that contributes to success that you would recommend to other people? So um, a very good example um, that I learned early on, we defined a template. Um, and for us, that was like a blueprint. Um, each site was different. So each site, each site was customized to its, to its, uh, to its location, right. to its type, to its functionality. But at a base level, we had a we had a template of what we needed to implement. Right. What was our systems? What was our core integration hubs, uh, integration layer, and what were the core applications that were required to drive that site? These are templates to sort of deliver your project. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a project plan or it it's from everything. A checklist. It, yeah, it's pretty much from everything. It could be from your business requirements right down to your funding uh, requests and your overall project plan. Who do you need to speak to to make sure that your overall project that uh, gets delivered? Whenever I, I join a new new client, I would look to see who my key stakeholders are and what who my key interact interacting um, groups are. So I will basically try and make sure that I've got a checklist to see what they do, what are they responsible for. The way we managed the sequential rollout was to have a blueprint. So would you say that that's something that you can use just on projects that are similar to each other, or is it something that you can transfer across all kinds of projects? There are elements of that checklist that you can use across all. So mm -hmm. if, you take the, if you take the funding, if every company is different in the way they, they manage their funding requests, but overall the principle is the same. You, you need to understand what the, the return on investment is, what the benefit is of to the business, and how long it's going to basically take. That's one example. From a project plan, again, it's the requirements gathering. Um, I've got that, my dependencies, and who else um, are who else from a third party is involved to deliver that. And that, as a skeletal, get defined your, your project plan. So it'll never be the same, because every organization or every project is different, but there are elements of there are some base foundation and principles that you can apply across all. Shri, thanks for your time and your insights. So we've heard today from Shri about how he recovered from something that went wrong and about something that worked or went well. Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. I believe that value from experience comes not just from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is, what can you learn from Shree's experience? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of hearing about it? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both, or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are useful and interesting, let me know and I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one of them, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.